Hey folks, welcome to Verified Investing. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. In today's video on this Wednesday, November 18th, 2020, I'm going to discuss some key stocks that are looking to have major breakouts or breakdowns. I want to talk about the levels, go over various things, and again, give you guys some good insight. Before we do that, let's briefly talk about the S&P 500 here, folks. S&P 500, unbelievably light in volume today. Take a look at this, folks. It is now nearing 1 p.m. Eastern time, and we haven't even done 20 million, let alone 19 million on the S&P 500 in the SPY ETF. So that is extremely, extremely light. What I'm thinking here is you've kind of got this lull where we got some great vaccine news the last couple Mondays. We're now getting close to the Thanksgiving holiday, which is next week, and markets are going to get very, very quiet. All right, doesn't mean we can't have some bigger moves, but in general, neutral bias, maybe a little bit of upside bias with light volume until we get through the holiday uh, of Thanksgiving in just over a week. All right, so that's the analysis there. Very simple on the S&P 500, nothing more to report. Just looking at the charts, you can see, again, big reversal candle here. We're still trading inside of this big reversal, which actually is slightly bearish. But again, with the volume getting lighter, unless we get bad news, it's hard to imagine that the markets would sell that dramatically before we get through the holiday season, all right? And not just the season. I think you could sell in early December and so forth, but really the Thanksgiving holiday next week. All right, so keep an eye on that. Now, a couple stocks I want to go over. LOW has to be looked at here, folks. There is a head and shoulder breakdown. Before I discuss this head and shoulder breakdown, what we need to do is just briefly remind you guys, uh, follow me on Twitter, at Gareth Soloway. Again, that's at Gareth Soloway on Twitter. In addition, um, come to InTheMoneyStocks.com, find my name at the top of the website, you can't miss it, and look for the drop down under my name that has verified investing alerts and verified options alerts. Both services are swing trades. One is uh, swing trading stocks, the other is swing trading options. I do daily videos for the stock one as well as live broadcasts. So again, really a huge benefit. And just to put in perspective, 188 closed out trades this year for over 1600 net percent profit in the swing trading stock service. The options obviously are much, much higher in terms of returns because obviously options move a lot more as well. All right. Uh, now going to LOW, they reported earnings yes, uh, this morning before the bell. The stock is actually taking a beating. What caught my attention here is this neckline, pivot low to pivot low. Look at the head and shoulders, shoulder, head, and shoulder. So this is a head and shoulder breakdown. Intraday, this was some day trading support, but we can erase it. On a swing basis, you're going to see further downside. This is your next target on the downside for, for the head and shoulders. So this stock should essentially continue lower until you get to about 138. Once you get to 138, which is another $12 lower over the next week or two, uh, you should see some significant support, and the stock could find um, some, some, some support there and bounce. Uh, looking at this stock, take a look at Tesla today. Tesla's having another big run. Obviously, they got added to the s or they will be added, and the announcement came uh, a couple days ago. They had a big day yesterday. Today, another solid day. The stock pushing up another 8.5%. This is a momentum name. We know that from the history of, of Tesla, that you have to be ready for these momentum-type moves. I am not that big of a believer in this move the last couple days, and the, the reason being is, so today's move, they got an upgrade. Uh, to overweight, I think it was Morgan Stanley, and a, and a price target raised to $520. Yesterday's big move was on the back of being added to the S&P 500. My issue with this is that you still haven't taken out this pivot high here, so unless we do that, this is just an inside move um, from this initial move up, right? And that's where you've been trading. If you look at this pivot low to this high, this is all inside action. Even here is not above this high pivot, so that's an issue right there. The other issue I have is that the stock is still ridiculously overvalued, but more importantly, nothing in the last couple days, adding to getting added to the S&P, the upgrade, nothing fundamentally changes their earnings potential or their revenue potential. So even though this news is good news that the stock is getting more recognition being added to the S&P 500, it's usually a short-lived factor because once these ETFs add the amount of shares, that's if they don't even have them already, to the ETF that tracks the S&P, that's it. There's nothing else there. It's done, and they're going to remain like that. So just keep that in mind. I also think the s and is a little crazy considering the volatility of this name. It's going to be, I think, the 10th or 11th biggest company in the S&P 500. So 
for S&P investors, be ready for added volatility. Not only do you have to deal with FANG stocks and such, but now Tesla is going to be one of the biggest companies in the S&P 500. And this stock regularly, as we see, moves about 10%, um, 5 to 10% a day. Okay, um, Neo reported earnings, folks. This is kind of an interesting story here. Neo's down about a dollar twenty. Um, there's a key head and shoulders on the intraday. I want to show you guys some very interesting stuff here. Um, this hasn't broken yet, so the neckline versus the lows took out the neckline, so that's in play. That head and shoulders should continue lower. Basically, for the Neo head and shoulders, you need this neckline to break. Look at how many pivots are along this line: pivot, 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 and pivot. And the point here is that. When Neo breaks this line, notice I'm not saying if because based on everything I'm seeing, it will eventually happen. Just a matter of is it tomorrow or next week or next month. When it breaks, the target, if you calculate, and this is something that we teach here at InTheMoneyStocks.com, calculating head and shoulder targets. The calculated, this is key calculation target for the um, downside target on the head and shoulders break is $30, almost perfectly at $30. So you're looking at a move all the way down here basically. And that, again, is calculated pivot high to the line, and then you max, you measure move it out there. But bottom line is that at some point, this should break lower, and when it does, this is going to see a pretty significant downside move. Um, I know there's some big funds that have been shorting this stock over the last week or two, uh, and again, the big money usually is right. This is a cult stock just like Tesla now uh, with a lot of smaller investors, probably one of the biggest held stocks in a, you know for Robinhood investors. But again... It is problematic, the valuation. Believe it or not, NEO even has a bigger, a, a, a more stretch valuation than Tesla by quite a bit at these current levels. So the earnings yesterday, they, they, they basically beat revenue by a couple million. I think it, they were expected to do about $666 million for the quarter. They came in at 669 That is a very minor beat. That's basically just coming in to what was expected. And their earnings came in at the whisper number. So basically when you have... Um, and the whisper number, if you you know, for the run in this stock, it should they should have blown away the whisper number. And just to give you a sense of what the whisper number is, is basically analysts over the course of a quarter say, okay, we think the company is going to make this, and then there's an underlying whisper number that really smart traders think it's going to hit, and that was 12 cent loss for Neo. And based on the recent run in the stock, it should have gone gotten even better than that, and it wasn't. It was at twelve cents. And again, the stock obviously having run up as much as it has in the last few weeks and months, um, you know, they should have blown that number away. So my guess is, I mean, I'm not surprised to see it down a buck today. My guess is, at some point in the next few trading days, we'll break this neckline, and then that's where you kickstart some major selling pressure, where you should go all the way down towards the thirty dollar level on Neo. All right, guys, don't forget, come follow me at on Twitter at Gareth Soloway and also come to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Follow me there. Uh, you can join the services, uh, verified investing, verified options. To pick one, pick both, whatever you want to do. And again, get my live trades there at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take care.